so it seems that we have a new Death Watch formation, which allows them to draw on their experience and impersonate one chapter after another throughout the game. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're taking a look at the Death Watch and their new formation from the Warzone Octarius rulebook. I think from all the previews for the book it was going to be fairly obvious that both Tyranids and Guard will be getting some love in the expansion book, but it seems that rather fittingly Death Watch have got a bit of love as well. I guess having a bunch of Xenos Hunters in the sector isn't the worst idea, what with large amounts of Tyranids and Orcs everywhere. In any case, it seems that Death Watch players have been rewarded with a new army of renown to play if they want to, which I think has some really quite fun new rules for basically having a flexible Death Watch force cycle through a bunch of different chapter tactics, employing the one that they need most per turn. So let's take a look for the interesting rules for the formation then, and talk about how strong it might be. So this particular army of renown is called the Death Watch Kill Team Strike Force, and basically seems to be built around the very fluffy way of playing Death Watch. Multiple different kill teams made of different specialist units, backed up by a few characters, and with very limited vehicle support aside from transports. It is fully match play legal, so you can use it in tournaments and things, and the rules are available in this new expansion, Warzone Octarius, though it is very expensive for the amount that you get if you did just want it solely for the Death Watch rules. In any case, if you do want to field this strike force, your entire army must be Death Watch, and you can only draw the units from a really limited amount of choices from Codex Space Marines. The only choices that you can take are character models, the Death Watch kill teams, their mixed units where you take a base unit and then you can add different specialists on top of it, and each one must make use of the Death Watch specialisms upgrade, the one where you pay an extra set amount of points for some re-rolls against a certain battlefield role. Other than that, you can only take Corvus Blackstars, and one Impulsor per Primaris kill team, or one other transport vehicle for the others. It's clearly a formation that's really trying to make the focus on the actual infantry on the ground, and perhaps most notably for competitive Death Watch, you won't be able to take any of their dreadnoughts. This really is a massive downside, as kind of weirdly, one of the best things that Death Watch are good at doing in 9th edition is making a great big dreadnought gun castle with various good buffing characters. It's definitely a weakness on the competitive front. This is very much forcing you to play Death Watch in a much more fluffy way. I think that the mixed unit kill teams really are quite strong and you can get some interesting combos out of them, but having them forced into taking one of those specialisms each is a bit of a tax, I think. Sometimes they can be really useful, but in general most players running stronger lists tend to leave them at home, not thinking that they're really worth the points investment. So basically you are going to be stuck with a fairly limited amount of options, building around the elite inventory that the Death Watch has to offer, but what sort of benefits do you get as a trade-off? First up, the formation has a unique Warlord trait, Relic, and four new stratagems. We'll get onto those in the next slide. Some of them are kind of useful. Secondly, because you are going to be using quite a lot of those kill team specialisms, you're allowed to take two of each one rather than just one. I quite like that you'd be able to double up on the Aquila one if you wanted. That does seem the most generalist useful one to me, and it works okay with one of their powerful stratagems that we'll see in a second. But really, the main reason that you actually want to be taking this formation is this really quite fun long vigil rule. Basically, at the start of each battle round, you can select a chapter tactic from Codex Space Marines, and the army can gain that chapter tactic instead of their Xenos Hunters one. So for example, at the start of the battle round, you could think that your Death Watch are going to take a fair amount of damage, so you might choose Iron Hands, and all of a sudden the entire army has a 6 plus feel no pain. Otherwise, you might want a surge of momentum to get them into combat, so you can select White Scars, and then all of a sudden your entire Death Watch army can advance and charge for a turn. You can't just repeatedly go for the same one, unfortunately, you have to move from one to the other, and when you do swap them out, you do lose the Xenos Hunters tactic, so you will be giving up some re-rolls against certain battlefield rolls or against Xenos in combat. To me though, it seems really quite fun. You could basically think each turn which chapter tactic will be the most useful to you, and say have a turn of additionally boosted survivability, followed maybe by a chapter tactic with some boosted firepower, and then maybe charge in with some massively boosted melee damage. You still have some flexibility if you still want to change up your chapter tactic, their Warlord trait can be helpful to also gain you the Xenos Hunters one, as we'll see, and you can still use that 2 command point Brotherhood of Veterans stratagem to switch to a different chapter tactic if you want to. Overall though, I think it's really quite a fun formation. You could be commanding an army with Salamander's chapter tactics one second, and then go into Imperial Fists the next. Here are the additional options that you get for running the Army of Renown, one Relic and one Warlord trait that you can choose if you want to, and then the options of four additional stratagems. First up, the relic is Inquisitorial Cypher. This one's a secondary objective manipulating relic, and it allows you to essentially see your opponent's secondary objectives, and then pick a different one if you think it will counter them better. 
For me, I'm not really all that convinced by this one. I guess sometimes it might help you to be a bit gamey, but I think most of the time you're going to be able to get away with just picking the right secondary objectives for your army before you see your opponents. This one does allow you to take two different secondary objectives from the Death Watch Codex if you desire, but for me, I think with Death Watch, I'll be a bit more tempted by Oaths of Moment from Codex Space Marines anyway, so I'm not really sure how powerful that is. I find the Warlord trait a fair bit more interesting though, it's called Xenos Bane, and it's a boost that's mainly just relevant to this formation, as it allows you to have an aura of getting the Xenos Hunters chapter tactic, even in addition to the Codex Space Marines one that you already had. So say for example, if you are having a turn of the Imperial Fist chapter tactic, getting the Exploding Sixes with Bolters and ignore cover, then the units around the Warlord would still be able to get their re-rolls against a certain battlefield roll, and also re-roll ones in melee against Xenos armies. I'd say this is definitely worth considering, seems handy enough to have at the centre of your battle line, affecting a whole bunch of units. From there we have four different stratagems, the first one is one called Battlefield Teleportation, one command point this, it basically lets you remove one of your infantry or character units from the battlefield at the end of your movement phase, and then in your next movement phase, you essentially deep strike it 9 inches away from the enemy somewhere, kind of similar to the Blood Angels on Wings of Fire. And this one can be kind of helpful later game, maybe to jump a unit out of combat that couldn't escape because he was wrapped and trapped, or maybe doing a bit of late game repositioning for a unit that's vastly far away from the enemy. Late game deep strikes like this can be pretty handy for hoovering up secondary objectives as well, and taking the fight to the enemy exactly where you need it. The next one's maybe the most interesting stratagem out of all of them, a hefty three command points this, and it's called Specialism Extremis. You choose one kill team unit, and any hits from that unit auto-wound their chosen target. Their chosen target will be the one that they get the boost against for their specialism, but if you choose it for the Akilla kill team, then it's against literally everything. You can only use this once per unit per game, but it does seem pretty crazy just to be able to completely skip the wounding step of the damage output, and punch a crazy amount of damage straight through at the enemy. Obviously, 3 command points is an awful lot of investment, so you're really going to want this to make an impact. It's probably going to be best on a big 10-man unit of some sort, maybe deep striking into battle with Teleportarium, I'd say probably the Akilla kill team, maybe into range of one or more supporting characters, and then just light up their target by auto-wounding with every single shot that they hit. Maybe potentially interesting ones could be things like Combi Flamers in the Tactical Doctrine, each guy maybe getting 4 or 5 AP-1 hits, so that could be something like 45 AP- wounds on the enemy just from a single squad. Or maybe you could have something like half a squad of Assault Intercessors and half a squad of Hell Blasters, and just auto wound with a whole bunch of those relatively low strength Assault Plasma Incinerators. It's kind of interesting to think what might be the best targets for this, there's a whole ton of options with all the different kill teams that you can take. Could certainly make one unit go off with an absolutely hefty bang though. Next up, for one command point we have Honoured Veteran. This allows one Sergeant model to be upgraded with a Warlord trait, and he also gets an extra wound as well for a bit more durability. This actually opens up really quite a hefty amount of options. The Death Watch have a whole ton of decent Warlord traits, Codex Space Marines has a whole load, and one of the Death Watch Warlord traits as well I believe gives you an extra relic, so I think this would allow a sergeant to take a relic if I'm reading that right. I guess if all you wanted was a bit more combat damage, you could think about just taking the Imperium Sword on a sergeant with a Thunder Hammer or something, but it also means that you could get some powerful buffing abilities just baked right into the squad. It could give your unit built-in Ignores Cover for example. Definitely seems like there's possibilities for this for a whole game buff, but just the one command point. Finally, for one CP, we have Black Vault Bolts. Sounds kind of fun, but I think it might be a touch underwhelming, really. It makes all of your unit's bolt weapons become heavy one, and any wound rolls of six do an additional mortal wound, on top of any actual damage that they inflict. I think the main killer for this one is the bolt shot becoming heavy one. It means that even if you're firing a 10-man squad all with bolt weapons, that's going to be usually only 10 hits, even if everything hits so usually only one or two mortal wounds. I guess you could use it on models that have multiple bolt weapons, things like Inceptors or Aggressors, but to be honest you're probably losing more damage than you're gaining by making them heavy worn rather than assault weapons. I guess if you need an absolute Hail Mary shot at fishing for a mortal wound on a key target, this could be useful, but I think it's pretty underwhelming for how much damage you get for the command point investors. Death Watch and Space Marines can usually do better than this. Overall, I'd say this Relic, Warlord, Trace and Stratagems are kind of nice to have, but probably aren't the main thing that attract me to the formation overall. I think Honor Veteran for the extra Warlord trait on a squad sergeant could certainly be handy. The Warlord trait seems okay if you're buffing a few squads with it, and that Specialism Extremist one certainly seems really quite exciting, but bear in mind it does cost a massive 3 command points, and that'll consume your ability to take other options.
So putting it together a bit, what are some of the more interesting combos that you might be able to run with the formation? First up, I do quite like the way that you can basically slant your force to be extra tough or extra aggressive depending on what turn it is and the positioning of the units. Things like Raven Guard chapter tactics for cover at range could be good against certain firepower lists. Iron Hands for 6 plus feel no pain all over your multi wound infantry certainly won't hurt. Or maybe even the Black Templar one for a 5 plus drug off against mortal wounds if you expect to be buried under a significant amount of them, maybe from Thousand Sons or Grey Knights. Interestingly, if you really wanted to play into Death Watch special issue ammunition, I think the Imperial Fist chapter tactic could actually be really interesting indeed. Exploding sixes on all bolt weapons and ignores cover all over your army is pretty great, and pretty much all of the kill teams will have a decent contingent of bolter guys in them, so having that all over the army for a turn for boosted shooting seems really quite nice to me. I think maybe most interesting of all though is how you could make the Death Watch into a real melee powerhouse of an army. The White Scars chapter tactic really is pretty beautiful for delivering combat units into melee, and it's one that I've seen people use quite a bit with Death Watch for a surprise advance and charge on a unit to get them into combat all the way on the other side of the table. I quite like that you could basically have a turn of that entirely for free across your entire army as well, and then if the charges are fairly easy to make, you could just switch to something like Blood Angels or Space Wolves and get some pretty hefty damage boosts in combat instead. I have seen a couple of people really trying to make the melee death watch work with their flexible assault doctrines, and it seems if you were trying to go down that route, this formation could be really handy. I think you could certainly try and build around the auto wounding stratagem for a turn as well, maybe a killer assault hell blasters or frag cannons combined with the watchmaster rerolls. You just want to guarantee as many hits as possible with high AP and high damage if possible, and the strength of your weapon doesn't really matter at all, as you know that all the wounds are going to guarantee if you're on a killer kill team. Overall, I'm kind of unsure as to whether or not people are going to find this competitive or not. It certainly seems like a really quite fun and powerful way to run Death Watch, and gives you a lot of opportunity for commanding an army well, choosing the right chapter tactics when you need them, and pairing them with the right doctrine for the time. It does come with some pretty massive trade-offs though. Losing the option to take Dreadnoughts really does rob the Death Watch of some of their best ways to get anti-tank firepower, and forcing every single kill team to take a specialism does feel like a bit of a tax, as you might not necessarily want to for every unit. For building a fun and fluffy Death Watch force though, I could see these rules being really quite popular. Seems like quite a nice reward for the squad based tactics that Death Watch are supposed to employ. So let me know what you think of the rules down in the comments below. Are these good? Would you like to try them out yourself? Or are the restrictions a bit too great and too limiting for it to be a strong army all round? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly be covering the rest of the Warzone Octarius supplement. Hopefully in the next video we'll focus on the High Fleet Leviathan supplement for the Tyranids, so feel free to subscribe or check back later if you'd like to see that. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have an Element Games affiliate link, which you can find in the video description below. Element Games is a discount retailer that sells Games Workshop's products and plenty of other hobby stuff. They're based in the UK, and they usually give anywhere between 10 and 20% off Warhammer models. If you were thinking about ordering in some models in the near future, feel free to give them a look. If you do buy anything after clicking the link in the description, a small amount of the profits go to help support Auspex Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. It can just be something to bear in mind if you like, if you are thinking about ordering in some models at some point soon. If you live in the USA or Canada, I do have a very similar Amazon affiliate link as well, again that's down in the video description, and works in basically the same way. A small amount of any sales going to help support the channel. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.